Good morning, everybody. Can everyone hear me okay? Awesome. Thanks for that response. All right. Let's see, nine o'clock. All right. So, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Craig Frizzell, and I'm with here Paul Bitters. And what we're going to be going over today is um, how we uh, or what we look for, and uh, how to build a uh, case uh, based on what we're looking for. If you have any questions, please go ahead and uh, put them in there, and I'll be taking care of that. What, with further ado, I'm going to present Paul Bitters to uh, go over what's going on. Uh, good morning. Uh, today we have uh, kind of set up uh, a little different from what we normally do. Um, we're going to go through and uh, kind of analyze some of the cases that we've uh, done here at the office and then uh, we're going to uh, kind of try to simulate uh, the steps we took to get there. Um, so to get started, one of the uh, first transactions or one of the first things we do here at the office is we kind of ask ourselves, you know, if we were put in the opportunity to steal or to commit a fraudulent activity, how would we how would we go about it? So like you know, what are the top five ways that we would steal? Um, it kind of puts you in the mind frame uh, to look at those transactions that kind of seem out of place. Uh, one, C, one, one item that seems to pop up the most when we're looking for um, theft is the, the ability to use the trans can transaction cancel uh, function. Um, we find that you know, if an employee works at a, one revenue center for a period of time, they begin to memorize the items that they sell. This comes easy if the employee only handles a small number of items like ice cream or hot dogs. You know, if, if they work at a cart or if they work at, you know, a booth that only sells, you know, uh, I know here in town we have, uh, you know, ice cream parlors in every casino. Um, you know, they do one scoop, two scoop, three scoop. You do that for a week or a month and now you have, you know, every price, every transaction kind of memorized. You might even be able to do, you know, a family of four and know how much it's going to come out to be. Um, movie theaters. Same thing, you, know, you sell one type of item, one ticket, uh, or you sell popcorn, or you sell hot dogs, you know, you're going to memorize those prices because they don't, they don't change a whole lot. And when you do that, then you have the ability when you see a, uh, a guest walking up to you with cash that you can start a transaction, you know the price of it, you can do a transaction cancel as soon as the order has come through, um, and then you can ring up uh, a couple ways. You can ring up an item that's cheaper, um, you know, say like a side of cheese or, you know, at uh, a movie theater, maybe you ring up a kid's ticket instead of an uh, adult ticket. But then you're able to uh, make change out of your drawer by doing a no sale or however your drawer may pop. We do have some places that the drawers remain open all the time. So from that spot, you can make change and then um, let your customer think that they've you know, bought the right item and you basically get to keep the greater difference of the two. Um, so we're going to have Craig go ahead and walk through how we can use our system to try to identify some of those transactions. With uh, transaction cancels, you should be able to find it on your summary view as well as your query builder under event type. We'll start with the, on the summary view. Go down here and what I'll do is, uh, what I normally do on a daily basis, if I'm looking for yesterday's transactions, great. If I just looked at the same location, well, I'm going to look at the last seven days worth of data. Pulls up a nice looking graph here. Let me move this out of the way. Oh, 
and we'll just go this. Once I get my data, I'm going to make sure that I have the last seven days applied. So this gives me a lot, you know, a much greater uh, amount of records. So something, you know, the more data, the, uh, the easier it is to see patterns. Once I get this, what I want to do is I want to aggregate it. And in this case, I'm going to look for a revenue center that's doing the most transaction cancels. And Paul and I were talking about this earlier. When you're looking at transaction cancels, um, you, you got to kind of think outside the box, like what would make sense and uh, what would not make sense. And in this case, we're looking at location. So what location wouldn't make sense? And we kind of came up with uh, looking at the general store. Even though they're not the biggest piece of the pie, you may see um, a lot of transaction cancels. And a typical transaction cancel at a restaurant would be if they're picking up the check and doing a transaction cancel right after that. All the server is doing is looking for the right check to either add items to it or close out. So you'll see a po you know, possibly a lot of pickup checks, transaction cancels, which those are fine. So we're looking at what wouldn't make sense. And that's why we picked the general store. And I click on that, and it's going to put, pick up all the uh, records from that location. So we already knocked down all the way down to 56 records here. And now at this point, we still got a number of people working at general store. So let's aggregate it one more time by employee. Gives you a couple people. Now at this point, we don't have to like think, you know, what wouldn't make sense. We can just start picking off the first person, second, you know, and so on. What we came across was this gentleman right here. So we went from 56 down to 6, and we can clearly, you know, just click on the check, see what kind of happened here. Uh, oh, because it's a zero, let me look at the the associations. All right, so looked, uh, let's see, begin check, in part candy, um, two seconds later, transaction cancel. But you can see on the next check, he rings up the same thing. So it was like, all right, well, maybe they changed their mind. Maybe they wanted a lesser weight or a different type of candy, but it's the same thing in bulk candy, no problem. And we just kind of go through these and see, see if they make sense. And you can see the black flag right there that's showing up right after I looked at it. And that's just stating um, that somebody looked at it. And if I go back over, it tells you right there, CR Frizzell at this date, time, for how long. And you see this one, this next one's uh, highlighted in red. And this is what we looked at. What we look at that's out of the ordinary for transaction cancels is the time frame. So at... 15.19 or 3.19 in the afternoon, there was Canvas Cowboys uh, rung up for 34.99. A few minutes later, then their transaction canceled. So this is one thing that we'd want to go back in and look, maybe there's a pattern, uh, maybe go back 14 days um, and see what's going on. Right now, this is the last seven days for this gentleman, but uh, that's some of the things we look for in transaction cancels is, if it makes sense, the location and also time frame. If it's right away, you know, it could be an easy, you know, customers like, I'll change their mind. But this is a few minutes after the fact that they rung it up. So this is something that we'd want to highlight in red like I did. And uh, by easily, I would just click on the flag, type in some notes, and hit update. And then it would change it to red. Is there any questions on that one? Excellent. Close out of this, and we'll go on to the next subject. <clears throat> uh, the next one we want to talk about is uh, voids. Um, we all know that the ability to void can be a very tempting tool for any employee to use to steal. We have had several cases where cashiers have collected cash from a guest and then voided all or some of the items off the check. It is important to look for employees who seem to have excessive voids or someone who voids any single item many times. So if a, if a uh, cashier um, is picking out a particular item, you know, it might even be a big selling item like a french fry. Uh, you know, if you look at your employees and five guys are selling a normal amount of french fries and all of a sudden you have one fella who doesn't seem to be selling as many as you'd think for the time period that they're there, if you look and he's voiding off those french fries, you know, that's one of those, just like we were talking before about memorizing prices, that's, 
you know, something that he has singled out that no one's paying a whole lot of attention to. You know, maybe we're not inventorying that particular item very well and he's picked up on it. So he knows that he can void those out more than other transactions and no one's really going to pay all that much attention. So voids are one that, that we give our cashiers the ability to uh, manipulate to try to kind of help the process go a little faster, help the transactions go a little faster, and help correct uh, errors for customer service. But it also gives them a very valuable tool to uh, commit fraud. Now you see here on the left hand side you got various forms of the void. A void no sale is just a way to uh, delete an item and then also open up the drawer. Void transaction cancel, uh, very similar, but in this case this is without popping open the drawer. Void tender, that's getting rid of how they're paying for it. Uh, this is a souvenir cup. Uh, void line item, that's individual items. Uh, or three voids on, each, on a certain check. One thing that we can do is, uh, for example, void tender. And just like before, I'm going to pick on the last, well, one of the last days here, go up here, last seven days, apply, so I get more data to um, dig down into. And I've got 3366 records, that's a lot. Because I'm looking for, uh, this is voids, what you do here is, again, look for revenue center. You can go Grizzly Creek, and at this point you can go, again, either figure out which one doesn't make sense or just pick the biggest piece of the pie. Now we're down to 240 records, multiple people. Aggregate again by employee. And what you see here, let me move, move this thing out of the way for me. But what this says is uh, Josiah has got 62 or 26 percent of the pie, and the nearest one is 30. Just with this number alone to this number is something that we'd want to look into. And now we're down to 62 records, two pages worth. Because we're looking at um, a whole week's worth, you have a couple options you can do. You can either highlight the amount by going from lowest to greatest, or greatest to lowest. You can also aggregate by date and see that on this date right here, he did the most. Maybe something that we want to look into. And now we're down to 30 records, a little bit more manageable. And at that point, you could go through and just kind of see what's going on. Oh, you got authorized negative transaction, K. Okay. And just click through. What you're looking for is somehow where there was no authorization, there were some voids in there along with a void tender. If after the void tender there was some way that the drawer opened, uh, for example like a no sale or some locations are able to sign out and sign in and the drawer will open. If you see that without an authorization, that's something you'd want to look at because normally what that means is that somebody is either returning something or doing a refund. Um, and doing it, um, they're manipulating the system some way in their behalf. The customer's behalf, a typical transaction would, you'd see like an authorized uh, negative transaction or an authorized void, and, and then you would see like the, the cash drawer open. That would be completely normal. What would not be normal is you'd see the voids without the authorization, and then you'd see a, a void tender with a negative amount followed by like a no sale. Those are the ones that we'd be looking for. In this case, it looks like uh, Josiah is uh, okay with the few transactions that we looked at. Do we have any questions at all for this uh, section? Now, what Paul was talking about was a void line item. Go over that. Very similar. Click on void line item. It might show up as menu item void. Regardless, it's the exact same thing. Oops. Now you can go back 14 days, 30 days, 
I normally start with seven days to see if there's a pattern. If there is a pattern, then I'll use other methods. I'll either go back 14, 30, or I'll use the behavior report at that point. You see that we have 27,000 records. There's no way that any one of us can go through that in an eight-hour shift. So just like before, let's do Revenue Center. Uh, which one would you like to pick? Any of them? All right. Well, we'll just pick on Grizzly Creek. I think our eyes want to go that big, that big part of the pie anyway. Uh, now we're down to 2,000. Much better. Employee. Looks like Kimberly's our number one, but you know she's really close to Daniel, so it's either one that you can go through. We've got Kimberly. 229. Well, let's even aggregate that more like we did before with the, the date. And you see on 411, and if nobody knew what the day was, you could easily click on your thing. Oh, Saturday. Okay, Saturday's probably going to make sense. More busy, uh, more transactions, more voids. So now we're down to 101 records. If you have the time for this, great. If not, damn, aggregate it again. Go by hour. Because you got to think, if somebody's going to steal, they're probably going to do it when the supervisor is not there. So the biggest piece of pie is right here. So we went from 101 records down to 28, much better. What I personally look for is these menu item voids versus this, versus these voids. Not saying that these are not as important as a menu item void, but a menu item void is just a button that they're pushing just to get rid of the last item. They're not as specific. And, and to Craig's point, um, no one knows their location better than, than you. Um, if, if you're going through this and you immediately notice that, you know, hey, this is every time supervisor takes a break or, you know, let me, let me go look and see what's going on in my revenue center when my supervisor takes their lunch. You know, that can be a great lead for you to get started on, on something because, you know, the most important thing to commit theft and fraud is opportunity. And all I'm doing right now is just going really quickly through all the menu item voids and seeing if there's any kind of pattern or um, if they menu item void, but there's a still a cash drawer open. Um, chocolate milk, menu item void. So they changed their mind with a chocolate milk and got a souvenir cup instead. Makes sense. It's cheaper. And when you're done, you just close these out. There's quite a few of them. Exit out. One thing I tell people also is when you have this pie chart showing up, you don't have to click here and then here. If you just click the last one, it gets rid of both. This is the other way. So it's basically uh, slowing down your time. Do we have any questions on the, the void line item? Real quick on Query Builder, show you what. Uh, Instead, of, it's not going to say void line item. It's going to say menu item void, and it's going to be exact same items. And you can also use the query builder to, um, when we're talking about looking for a particular item that is voided, if you want to look up, uh, you know, how many times a churro was uh, voided off, you can actually go and just look for that specific item, and that way you can be able to compare who's, you know, who's voiding that item. See if there is a churro. Wait, I spelled it right. So let's try. Void. Apparently, they don't sell churros here. So let's try. Event type. Yeah. 
So the query I just did was I want to see a menu item void of water. If you're going to be that specific, that is one way to go about it. The other way is to literally type it up here, how it comes across the register or on the receipt. Any questions for that? Excellent. We'll move on. And uh, as we saw in the summary view, we had um, several ways to attach voids, um, void and transaction cancel, um, void and no sale. Anytime you can add one of these other identifiers um, to your void search, you are basically opening the door uh, to look at more, kind of a more of an advanced query. And, you know, if, if someone's doing a no sale, that's something to look at in the first place. But if they're doing a void and a no sale, now you've just doubled, uh, you know, doubled the identifiers as far as what's, you know, what's scary about that transaction, what would make us nervous. Now we're doing void and we're popping the drawer, uh, just like Craig was saying. So a lot of the cases that we come up with, you know, void, uh, void plus no sale, that's, that's one that we can use, you know, pretty much in a pinch to go find something uh, interesting. Uh, if if a person is doing a void and a no sell, a lot of our cases um, have come from one of those type of transactions. Um, another oh, and that was to say, if uh, if you don't have some of these, if you don't have void no sell, um, I think most most do. It's one of them that we uh, we install when we put it in, uh, put the system in. But uh, uh, void and transaction cancel. Um, if you don't have some of these queries that that we're using today. Um, let us know and we can uh, set those advanced queries up and put them in your system. With the void no sale, we came across a transaction that looked a little suspicious. So I'll show you how we did this. Just like before, click on the, um, the bar graph, go last seven days, apply. And we are looking for... back, get a better way, let's see what this one is. This one you can see right here, begin check, uh, they voided two items off with a negative balance. Remember I was talking about that void tender earlier. This is one I would look at, even though you see right here, authorized transaction void, this is fine, this is a complete normal check, but what the thing that threw me off was right here. You got your two voids, 999, I mean, you round it off at $10. That's an easy number to remember. Uh, total to do a negative 2158. This would be fine from this point on if it just said uh, cash drawer open and uh, the customer, uh, you know, if you're thinking about the customer's aspect, they get their money and they walk away. Not a problem. The thing that threw me off was this void tender, a negative amount, but then right here, look at the time frame. It's not far away from when they start, they stop this check do a no sale, cash drawer open, and it's open for one second, I mean, or actually a minute and one second. Even if this was a normal transaction where they're maybe giving out change, a minute and one second is a little long to give out change. So this is why this one uh, popped up. And also we're looking at, you know, no sales, uh, where would it not make sense? In this case, it didn't make sense at the general store. Where they would make sense is like a, you have a place maybe next to arcades or um, you know, some kind of uh, games like that where they're always going to be constantly looking for change. So you'd see a lot of no sales. Do we have any questions on no sales? Or void no sales, I'm sorry. Um, the next one we want to look at is uh, negative transactions. Uh, we all know that negative transactions are, are a normal part of the uh, point of sale process especially when we're talking about uh, merchandise revenue centers where we have a lot of returns, kind of like what we were just discussing with uh, Craig. Um, but anytime a transaction goes into the negative, it's definitely worth taking a look at. Um, this query can bring to light those employees who are, are abusing the functions that are built into our day-to-day -day operations. We all know that we have to do returns. Um, we all know that um, refunds happen and returns happen. Um, 
but looking into those negative transactions, if, if an employee is doing a refund that doesn't make sense or is doing a refund that is um, being repeated when, it, when you don't understand why it would need to be, you know, why, why are we always returning, um, you know, televisions? Why, you know, how many times is there going to be a faulty TV? Or how many times is there going to be, uh, you know, a hamburger that gets, comes back that's not, you know, to the guest liking? You know, anytime you have multiple refunds by one person during, you know, an overextended period of time, that's going to be something that we're going to want to take a look at. Um, we just had a very large case where uh, a cashier was manipulating um, just that, manipulating the refund. They had a common practice of doing refunds, uh, but one guy was taking it um, further by basically still doing a refund, but but doing it slightly different than what everybody else was doing. And it was that slight difference that came up in the data so that they were able to um, stop him from doing that behavior. So what we have here is negative transactions. You either do the, the last seven days graph or yesterday's data. This is, I'm just going to show you another way of how I get to that seven days worth of data. Click on yesterday's data so it brings up the data grid itself. And same as before, last seven days, apply. An aggregate by revenue center and you'll see that the stroller shop comes up number one when we first started looking at it, we're like oh my god they're, they're doing a lot of negative transactions but it also made sense of the fact that um, you had to do a, a leave a deposit down once you turn back in the stroller or the electric stroller or, or whatever uh, you get that deposit back so there was a ton of uh, negative transactions here so we might sometimes you might want to look at it sometimes you might not look at it You'd want to see, like, all right, where would be a location where you'd see a lot of, or that you wouldn't see a lot of negative transactions that you shouldn't anyway, like maybe a, a restaurant. And just like before, aggregate employee. Uh, this person doing the, the most, 18 versus, you know, half of that. And because, like what Paul was saying earlier, that you're going to know your location more than we will, uh, sometimes, you know, you might have a person to come up as a, a high number, but it comes out to that they're a supervisor, so it makes complete sense. I'm going to backtrack because I want to show you a little bit something else um, that our program can do. Get to get rid of the pie chart. So I have 2,993 records. What if you only wanted to look for a certain amount? Anything, anything, what, what? This is going negative five to zero, so you don't have to flip it. So it's a way of manipulating the system to get what you're looking for. So anything above negative five dollars. So if you're looking for specifics, you could do it that way as well. Do we have any questions on that? Excellent. Um, similar to uh, negative transactions is, you know, there are, are things that we put into the POS system to help customers and to promote, promote business, and that's where discounts come in. Um, I had several cases where, um, and usually this comes at a supervisor level when they're getting, they're, they're given the ability to do a discount, but if if we have an ability to discount and we're doing that so that we can um, enhance the customer's experience or um, promote our, our revenue center um, using coupons or, you know, even, you know, regular discounts like, you know, militaries or for seniors. Um, or, yeah, I, Craig makes a good point, to, um, to get rid of old inventory. You know, if you have an excess of something and you want to try to get it out your door, 
a lot of times we can we can discount that item off. Um, but those are the good reasons for discounts. The bad reasons are once your employees get used to doing a discount, they can manipulate it for their friends or they can even manipulate it for themselves. Um, I've seen cases where there's been an old discount that hasn't been removed from the system. Um, and no one's looking at that discount anymore, but your employees are still using it. They're still using a discount that's not, um, you know, not something that you, you want to have seen on your check. So if you uh, use our system to go look for an old discount or look for a discount that's out of place, that, that just doesn't belong, um, the system does a really good job of making those anomalies pop. So what we got here is we got various forms of how discounts are done. In this case, I'm going to click all discounts or discounts all, just like before. Click on a pie graph, do last seven days, hit apply. And then I'm going to aggregate by the location or revenue center. And I'll look around, see again, uh, let's see, discounts, discounts, discounts. Uh, let's see, not really happy, let's see. Yeah, let me show you a different way. This is the typical form. Because we're looking at discounts, oops, came down. On. I can also aggregate by discount and see what types of discounts there are. Some of the discounts that, that pop up to us are this, where is it at? Open percent discount. This is a way of like, uh, it's, it gives too much discretion to the employee as how much to get, um, take off the item. There's other ones you'll see open dollar discount, and it's very similar. So even though it's not the big piece of the pie, it's something that shows up like, hey, why are there any of these open percent discounts? And once we get this, we got 1,701 records, aggregated by the location again. So, I'm sorry, we already got the revenue center. Uh, let's see, we're looking for, where are you at? Looking for a certain person here. It was under Snoopy's. Let me just go right back to it. It was under um, Snoopy's HQ. If you don't, if you want to see more of the pie, like other revenue centers, this is one option you can do too. This goes up to 50. ABC Snoopy's HQ. This one. And see, this is the, the funny thing about the program is like, you know, during training, we're trying to find a certain thing, and you're like, um, wait a minute. We're still seeing that, which is great, and here's Snoopy's HQ finally. All right, so this is what we'll show, what we what we saw anyway. Uh, and oh, you know, what? I wonder if correct. So this is how you could get to this open in, you know, open percent discount. I'm going to show you this one check specifically in a second here, but. Same thing, you just kind of go through these things and look and say, all right, what happened here? Authorized. Okay, great. Next one. And also credit card um, transactions. You know, those are very hard to um, verify if there was uh, any kind of fraud or theft in, involved. Boy, tender again, like we were showing before. Open percent discount. Visa payment. So let me show you the transaction that I actually found. And I'm going to kind of a cheat way. If you have, if you're looking for a certain transaction or a certain time frame, if you're looking for specifics, go right to the query builder. I know the check number. I also know the location. Uh, Snoopy, where are you at? Snoopy's AQ. I'm going to go back 14 days because I want to make sure I get this check. And hopefully it, it shows up. 
There we go. Okay, awesome. All right. See, by default, it's going to show you the latest time and the earliest time. So what I normally do is I'll click on time right away because my eyes don't work that way. I like to work top down. So get your begin check tells you what they rung up. Pay attention to the time frame, 3:58 in the afternoon. This thing closes at 9:23. So right there is a huge issue. So this is pickup check, 58:31. Transaction canceled. It was authorized 404, but then all of a sudden, it, now it's adjusted. Sign out, sign out. Pick it up again. There's your discount, and so forth. Any questions on this one? Let's look at that other check here, the five eight eight seven check. Uh, we're going to look at another check here. Query Builder and bam. All right, what I just did, because I get a lot of questions on this, if you get rid of one and you still have this, don't freak out. Just click on this and it brings it back up again. Five, eight, oh, oops. Seven, two, five, eight, eight, seven. Oh, five, eight, eight, seven. Get the right. Uh, and my dys dyslexia kick in. The location. Where it was? Uh, Looking for discounts here. All right, we'll come back to this one. Review. Let's find out. This is one thing. Remember when I was um, I applied that red flag? This is one place you can go and find out what other pending reviews there are. We've got 199, and it should have. Let's see. There we go. Look at our time frame here. 23. KPF, I pass it and I pass it. Okay, KPF, okay, so which one? All right. What we're looking for, which one? No, oh, sorry, bear, bear with us a second here. Sale. These are going on right now. We're at one percent open discount. Basically. Okay, here we go. Open this sucker up. There's our discount one that we're trying to look for. All right, so you got a begin check, and already there's a, a, a negative amount or an open percent discount. Where's the item? We, we don't even know. It's just the fact that there was total due of negative two ninety one. And this is one thing that it kind of throws us off, that the cash drawer open for that, that 16 seconds. Why? For $2.91, but what was the item is, is the problem here. I mean, this could be a, something like you see something like this, you want to you know, ask the questions like, hey, what's going on? Do I need to um, further investigate that employee and to see if there's any other open percent discounts? Um, if so, yeah, great. That's why I put it to pending. You know, needs further review. Um, if it was fine, if I saw nothing else, I could easily switch the flag. Put something like OK and update. Once it turns the green on the home page, it will actually go down to we had 199. It's going to go down to 198 and get rid of it, clear it out. But because we found this today, I don't want to get rid of it yet. And you can put whatever you want here. And switch it back to red. Do we have any questions on that at all? Oh, 
All right, excellent. Nope. Um, and kind of what Craig was going over there a little bit when we were looking at the discounts, uh, another thing that we look at, um, and it, it goes hand in hand with uh, with discounts or any way that you might want to manipulate the check, even voids. Um, we've had cases where a, a check looks completely normal through its transaction. You know, we sell an item, we get the money for the item, we close the check, the drawer closes normally, um, everything looks fine. Um, and then you'll notice on a check where it'll say pickup check. And what had happened here is, in this particular case, a supervisor uh, who was working the night shift would go back, reopen a check that was um, totally fine, and then void all the items off of that check, or apply a discount that would make the check go down to zero. And now if that was a cash check, then now you have a, a check that should have been $12 is now zero, and that $12 is free to be removed by the manager who is counting your money at the end of the night. Um, pick up checks, anytime you see a check that is picked up multiple times. Now I understand if you're in a restaurant or a venue like that that does pick up checks a lot, and you have your sodas, and then you have your meal, and then you apply your discount, you're going to see a pickup check on those type of venues. But if you work in merchandise or quick service, um, there's no reason to see a pickup check two hours later when the guest has already gone home for the day. Okay, so pickup checks down here. Pickup check. It'll also, be in the query builder under event type. Just like before, we're going to click on the, the graph. Click on a bar. Apply last seven days. And there we go. Now we have 21,203 records. Um, this is where you could aggregate immediately and go into uh, Revenue Center and look at where wouldn't it make sense. And this is the, the one I was trying to get to earlier, Snoopy's HQ. It makes sense at restaurants because like I was stating where you're going to pick up a check and, and transaction cancel right away because the wrong check that you're um, trying to add items to or close out. But uh, Snoopy's HQ, like a, a revenue center that sells you know, plush toys or, or whatever, that's kind of odd. And uh, this is what exactly what I did to find this 1261. I just kind of went through these things. Pickup check. Uh, this is odd that there's a zero balance right away, but the fact that there's the cash drawer doesn't open is fine to me. So I would get rid of it. And you can do what I'm doing, you know, or you can just highlight the association, which is like a running receipt. Most of the time, it will show what happened before and after. I'm like okay, void tender. See right here the pickup check uh, negative 288, and then you get the 38. But it just voids tender. It's just voiding out the way that they paid. The void tender is also like a transaction cancel. The drawer didn't open, so this is fine. Let me get out of this one, and then then we have our 1261 check. This is the one that um, threw my attention, and you can see I'm manipulating the system here. I can. You know, move this down. I can even make it take the whole border or whole screen. I mean, so you get the plush newbie at six, you know, sixty dollars, but at three fifty-eight is when it started. And service total, so they should have paid for it within a couple minutes or so. Uh, service total means that's going to reprint the check. Pickup check. They pick it up. All right, four hundred four, and say, you know, probably like, oh, what's going on with this? Oh, it's declined. Okay, great. I'll go ahead and authorize the cancel. It's canceled. Then all of a sudden, you know, it's adjusted. Okay. Then uh, this person signs out, signs back in, but then they pick up the check once more. Pick it up again. Now there's a total due. 5831. They void tender. What is uh, weird about this is the fact that once it's been canceled, you should not open it up again. There's no reason to open it up. If it's been canceled, it just means it's canceled. You know, start a new check. And normally, you would see like maybe the plush toy was a, uh, you know, they got the wrong one. They wanted a, uh, you know, a different character versus Snoopy. Who wouldn't want Snoopy, right? 
and then uh, you'd see them ring that up and, and so forth. But the fact that this lasted till 923, you know, that is the one that brings up uh, a red flag. That's why we set it to a red flag pending because we want to find out is this happening, you know, elsewhere or is it happening with the same people? And then, you know, look for a behavior and maybe make a case off it. Uh, do we have any questions on that one? Awesome. <clears throat> so, you know, these are these are about you know six or seven of the uh, ways that we uh, can kind of dig through the data and look for um, things to kind of pop out to catch our eyes. And, and you know, you're going to get as you use the system, you're going to have things that pop up in your revenue center that um, that's special for your revenue center that. You're gonna you're gonna immediately see something, and you're gonna say, well, that you know that's not right. You know, we always say, ask the question. If it, if I'm confused, there there might be a reason why um, there could be fraud going on, or even just a policy and procedure, something that that we just need a behavior that we need to correct. Um, so as you're going in the system every day, and you know these five or six uh, transactions are something that's interesting to you you can create a behavior report that you can kind of go look at every day that compares um, all your employees. Uh, so what I was doing while Paul was talking is I was showing you a different way to see that pickup check. It got us to the exact same location. So you can either use the query builder or the summary view. All right, so this is the behavior report. And uh, by selecting the, the people icon, it's going to give you everyone that has um, logged into that location, you swipe their car for the last 28 days by these parameters, seven days or four sections of seven days, 28 days. If I click on the terminal, it's going to give you all the terminals that are associated with that revenue center. Or if I wanted to uh, compare different terminal or different revenue centers, like Four Cornerstones versus Cantina. And this is where if you had multiple like revenue centers, like for example, Starbucks uh, or similar coffee shops, throughout the park or throughout the location that you're at, you could actually manipulate this and literally compare each one of those. But we're going to go for people. And while this is bringing up, this is, remember, everyone that has logged in for the last 20 days, so it might be lengthy. Uh, we're going to always have a starting point no matter what. So in our case, it's a begin check, or if you had a start check, it would be a start check. And we're going to look for all those items that we discussed, starting with uh, which one? Transaction cancel. Menu item void or void. In this case, it's going to be menu item void. Void plus a no cell. That's going to be on the query events. And real quickly, query events, these match the exact or their exact copy of your summary view. So if there's any questions about that, uh, let me go over here real quick to the, which one was it? Void plus no sell. There I am. Uh, negative transactions right here. Discounts. The POS events are all the events that can come across your register uh, registers. Uh, not saying that, um, depending on what um, type of register you have, maybe some of these will not work. But like, for example, menu item void versus void line item. And so it will it will work. It's just how you um, how it's written. Uh, discount and pickup checks. All right. All right. So with the ones that we've gone over, which one? You have reopen. Oh, no, I don't want reopen. I want pickup check. All right. So other ones that we um, we talked about today, we're going to run a report and just at this location, just for you know, just to grab one. Once we selected, we want to hit the reports, and it's going to pull up the behavior report. You can see it's already working here. Uh, this is actually an old one, but you'll see uh, probably a lot more people on the left-hand side. You'll see the four sections of seven days at the top, and underneath that will be the items that we selected, if they produce any results. If there's no results, it won't even show up. At the bottom, you'll have averages. And the average, for example, this one, 39095, is literally for begin check during this time. The average is over here 
4 and 31, for example, this, this person is for the entire 28 days for this person alone under begin check. And then close check is around the same for, for this person. Uh, once it loads up here, since I, I can keep talking about this, anything that's in pink, which are these numbers all and throughout here, is above average. Here's your average, above average. Green is going to be, um, just. this is set up like a bell curve. So anything that's just around the norm is going to be green, plus or minus two deviations is going to be yellow and red, plus or minus three or more. And we finally got it. So I talked enough to where it was able to load. And you got to think also, I mean, it, you're pulling data from that many people, um, 20 days worth of data with all the items that we selected. At your location, it will be a lot quicker, but because we're doing remote, um, this is why it takes or it may take a little bit longer. So these are the items that we're looking at. And the only thing I didn't discuss was anything in blue and uh, how it comes across your screen, it should be all these numbers in this section, with the exception of zero, are hyperlinked. So if I wanted to look at a certain transaction or number of transactions, I would just click on it. And I'll, I'll show you that in a second here. Uh, for example, transaction cancel. Now we have this person doing 12. Higher than norm. The norm is 2.89. And you got these two. Everyone else is, is quite under that. Now you can look at that. Uh, you got pickup checks. 319, 322. Th these are huge numbers. Could be management. Um, this is one thing that you would know your park again and, or your location, and you could literally manipulate this to get the numbers that you're looking for. Like this is James Coleman. If I want to get rid of James Coleman because they got zeros all the way across, and some of these other people, I could easily just go back. I'm not going to do it because of how long it took to uh, get the report, but I would just go back and uh, minus uh, next to his name and get rid of him. And then I'd run the report again so I'd get these numbers that would be a little bit more accurate. Uh, but we'll go over these 12 just for uh, training purposes, just to show you how it's a hyperlink. And there's my 12. And I could easily either look at the association, which is the running receipt, and see what happened. A charge tip, uh, avoid, transaction cancel, and they um, picked it up right after that and did it correctly. Awesome. Or I could do like I did before and let it run the check summary. Do you have any questions on uh, running the behavior report? Uh, does it export into different formats? This is a, uh, let me go back to it. There you go. You can print the report is one thing. Other than that, you can do this. Yeah, you can do, uh, this is going to print as is. If you're into the grid page, you can export this into an Excel sheet. Did I answer your question there, Dan? Also, the graphs. The graphs, the, the best way to do that, and I'll just show you real quick here, let's do an a hour. Where's, there we go. All right, so you got your graph here. The best way to do this is honestly if using your snipping, snipping tool, uh, if everyone knows where that's at, it's literally on your Windows screen. And uh, depending on what level uh, you have, if it's Windows 7 or, or 8, uh, Windows 7, you do a search for a snipping tool and do that. Or um, Windows 8, you uh, literally go to the Windows screen and just start typing or a screenshot. There you go. That'll work too. All right, so let me get out of this, and I'll tell you about... Uh, Next month's webinar is going to be on the back of the house. So what you'd want to have is, um, if you're interested in learning more about that, great. If not, um, please have your IT or your surveillance techs uh, be ready to go for that and have any questions too. And that is going to fall on, let's see, I think it's May 12th. Yeah, May 12th of next, uh, obviously next month for the next webinar. Uh, anybody have any questions at all before we uh, end it? Yes, you sure can. Uh, you can either email us um, at investigations at 
eConnect.com. Or what you could do is, excuse me, you could go to um, the web, you know, Google search or, or whatever, and type in eConnectGlobal.com. Under knowledge, it will be like training center. You click on training center, and it will probably ask you for a password. The password is all lowercase training. And at that point, it will pull up uh, next month's webinar, which you can actually register for it. Or uh, we can send out a, um, a mass uh, email to everyone. So either way, and then with today's webinar, it should be up there, we'll say at the, the earliest two hours, uh, at the max we usually say about 24 hours. So if there's anything you missed or if you just want to reiterate it or, or whatever, it'll be up there, as well as um, all the past uh, webinars. Anything else or, uh, or we can conclude this? Also, do you have a tour in a doc? You know, that's a good question. Um, we do have some. You know what the best thing to do is probably um, go ahead and email us with that. And uh, maybe we can, uh, or give us a call, actually, uh, either one. Um, and we can figure out exactly what you're looking for. Because we do have some doc documents pertaining to this, but uh, I'm not sure if it's what you're looking for or, or what. If it's certain cases, uh, Depending on the location and where you're at and everything, you know, we might be able to tell you what cases uh, were referenced, but um, for the most part, just for you know, privacy issues. But if it's um, you know event types or um, something of that nature, yeah, we, we do have uh, documents of that uh, nature. So just uh, an email at us, investigations at eConnect.tv, and um, we can try to uh, help you out with that. Oh yeah, that's excellent. As a matter of fact, um, the term I think the terms that you're looking for is where is it at? We have a um, a doc with all these terms and basically a, a quick definition of each. The best thing, the, the best way I learned was uh, I literally wrote down you know each one of these what I thought they meant and how to manipulate them. Uh, that was the, the best way of when I first started how I um, kind of got the system and got a lot better at it. You know, looking for theft, looking for those um, behavior issues or just different things. Like with loss prevention, I mean, with video, you have the option to see how the person's acting. You know, if they're acting just normal or, or just something's different with them. With data, it's a lot more difficult. The, the best way to do it is literally if you've ever run a register in your life, You'll know what a transaction looks like. If you haven't, then I suggest, like, literally learning these terms and kind of get an idea of how you would manipulate them. You know, think like a thief if you can, you know, or get with, um, uh, get with maybe food and beverage or, or somebody that actually rings a register or can walk you through it. Yeah, it, it's fine. At first, you know, it's a little intimidating, but... Um, you get to the point where, you know, like like for us, we'll go through here, and we're looking for like we have our top five or top ten that we'll look for, and we'll just click. And it's it's almost like muscle memory. We're looking for certain things, and it doesn't take that long to to play around with it and get an idea of what you're looking for. And that is it. So, if you guys are all good, uh, great. If not, uh, you know, you can email us, uh, give us a call, and that's about it. And you're right, knowing the location is definitely key. So, everyone have a great day, and you are welcome.